Welcome back to the Ramen Packet Gaming Radio Show, the only show where you can eat gummies guilt-free. Disclaimer, we are not sponsored by Big Gummies. However, gummies are delicious. They absolutely are, but they're not ramen, so they're inferior. And with that, we're going to head into today's topic. So, to set the stage a little bit, for long-time listeners of our radio show, we may have a certain rivalry with an infamous ramen fury, not because of anything they've done, we've never encountered them in the wild, but their name is similar to ours, and that is quite battle-inducing. That is absolutely the case, you know? If you see your clone in the distance, mimicking you, imitating you, pretending to be the better version of you, don't you want to have just a little bit of revenge, a little bit of a battle to claim your right to be the true you? That is our experience with Ramen Fury. Indeed. So, for those unaware, Ramen Fury is a game. What? I know, right? So, to go on a mini tangent, so after I returned from our Ramen Fury session, I found that one of the something I'd ordered for my desk garden had arrived, and it was my three-pack sampler of hot pepper seedlings. <laughs> and the first thought that came to mind was high-pitched screaming peppers <laughs> being genetically bred because they have a chemical that keeps away predators. So we bred them to make that chemical cause severe mental and physical distress so we could eat them. <laughs> and isn't it fitting, beautiful, that with our casual one-side rivalry against Ramen Fury, we would not only endorse them by purchasing their product, but then proceed to eat hot peppers dramatically? It just seemed weirdly fitting. It was... For us to scream at each other while playing <laughs> Robin Fury. They're tearing us apart. They really are. Like, I don't think there's ever been a game that's caused this much emotional distress. Because, you know, I was expecting just a fun card game, right? Like, I thought, oh, this rivalry is a joke. No, it's not a joke. This game is trying to kill us with ghost peppers. So... To give a bit of a summary, I'll actually let you give the summary of the rules of the game, and I will chime in where needed. Fantastic. So, to summarize it, the rules of the game, in order to win, is that you need to get the most amount of points. How do you do that? Well, by making the tastiest bowls of ramen you can. Each player gets... I approve this message. <laughs> yes, that is true. Ramen gives you real-life stat bonuses. But with that said... Each player gets three bowls of ramen and a deck of cards. These are ingredients. Ingredients are... Well, it's not that each card is worth a certain point. It's rather that there are certain cards which are flavor packs. And each flavor pack has a specific condition that needs to be filled out if you want to get the most amount of points out of it. For example, maybe you picked the chicken flavor pack, wherein you have to get a pair or three of a kind of a certain ingredient to get a certain amount of points. There's a whole load of these different sort of variations, but overall it was a very smooth experience overall, and you'd think that perhaps with something as relaxing as making ramen, but with cardboard cards, nothing could cause distress, not even the slightest, slightest bit. So to follow up on that, a couple notes is, first, the packaging's amazing. It's a resealable ramen package. That's just genius, 10 out of 10, flawless plan. So what's interesting is, we read the rule book, and I had a critique I was preparing for today's episode, but the game itself fixed it, because I'm like, oh, so you have to score, but how do you know what the score point system is? But because of how the game's structured, we have to grab one flavor and up to five ingredients, up to four ingredients. Mm -hmm. You get to, the flavor card says right on it how much points things are worth. So the basic play of the game of each is dealt out three cards and there's four cards in the middle and you want to grab ingredients put on your bowl. That's simple. That's casual. That's child friendly. But then it got cutthroat and they did it with such eloquently clean mechanics. First is the hot pepper. <gasps> the hot pepper gives you <laughs> minus one point if it's in your soup because if you're eating your green onion, soy, ramen, and then you just bite into a habanero pepper, it hurts you. This makes sense. But, but what's really... Oh, go ahead. But what if you get the elusive ramen fury flavor packet? It is the name of the game itself. If you get your hands on this packet, the ghost peppers are suddenly worth 
double the amount of points, and the spicy hellhole that is filling your mouth is no longer a torture, but a sweet release of victory and painful reward. Well, what's funny is the few mechanics they put in. So the rulebook almost seemed confusing. After 10 seconds of play, it became straightforward. But the complexity comes from a few little rules. First is that you can just play hot peppers in your opponent's soup to poison them. <laughs> you also can just play delicious garnishes on people's soup to ruin their combos. But we have this beautiful moment where you're like, oh, I'm going to poison your soup of hot peppers. I'm like, I'm going to make it hot pepper flavored. <laughs> but they also added in the spoon mechanic where twice a game, you can either lift an ingredient out of your soup to throw into their soup, or you can steal a topping right out of it. And then you had a situation where it's, okay, I have three peppers in my soup, but I'm going to throw them in their soup to ruin it. <laughs> but I think the rule that really caught me off guard was out of your actions of draw a card, pick a card from a line, there's one that just resets the three open cards that anyone can grab, the four open cards. Oh, that one messed also, with me. Also, there's a, you have to use a rule to eat your soup. And when you eat your soup, no one can add or remove ingredients. What made it really interesting is the game ends when anyone finishes their third bowl of soup. Which means the moment you find yourself ahead on points, you can just shoot down that soup and try and quickly end the game. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting design because a lot of these games have a habit of running on longer than they need. But mm -hmm. with any player being able to spend three actions to end the turn, there was more strategy than I thought. Like, it was a game where I could soundly beat you, which meant that it wasn't a luck based game. I know there was a while where I reset the top four cards like five times trying to get the <laughs> missing ingredient for my chicken tofu soup. Yes. And at some point, like, I got enraptured <coughs> in this relatively simple game. Like, it's going to stay a col much like ramen itself, is going to stay a culinary staple in our collection. The real question, though, is if the makers of Ramen Fury will ever hear a review about Ramen Fury, because Ramen Packet Games plays Ramen Packet Game, is just perfect story symmetry. I'm sure they'll get to listen, you know? Like, wouldn't you want just some random person to review your game? Like, if you just met, like, Joe Schmo the Nobody, and they were like, Hi, we're going to be reviewing Cobalt with Bad Credit. Wouldn't you sit down to listen to that? True, but remember, I'm me. So if some random person in a subway is like, Can you please sit in that bunch for three bench for three hours? Because I must carve you out of marble. Of course I do it. <laughs> Why would I not? Is someone paying attention to me? I love attention. Oh my goodness. Like, but yeah. Oh, go ahead. The moment where this game broke me was where Richard, all of a sudden... He put on... He put on... I can't even say it. He put on what's essentially his goblin voice, but even more high-pitched somehow, and it's just the pepper naming all the reasons why it's painful to exist. I'm going to pop something on a genetic engineering thing so that way through evolution I scare off predators. But they forcibly <laughs> bred me and my kind to be harder and harder to cause immense social and psychological distress for eating it. I am in your soup. I am repulsive. Something like that. Yes, like that. I couldn't stop laughing. I think that's why you won so many times. You oh, just I just assumed I outplayed you. But <laughs> no, you distracted me. I would have gotten you if not for the peppers. Oh my god, this is a good game. I like and it's so easy and scalable. Because the thing is, we play very involved games. So something that literally the rules are written on the cards, you just tell people you have like one of four things you can do and then deal it out. Sometimes you need that to mix it up. Like after going flesh and blood and trying to get the timing of instant speed reactions down it's nice to just put peppers in your soup it really is like actually just before we played ramen fury uh dear richard here attempted to uh teach me the online training tool for flesh and blood and my god was i lost <laughs> Well, what's funny is, and this was my own evolution for Flesh and Blood too, was you learn the basics of how to play from like a YouTube video and your friends. And then the online tool 
rule enforces you so you can actually, like, know the timings. But you decided to pick the fire wizard, which, much like putting the hot pepper <laughs> in your own soup, you decided that I want to go through immense emotional and psychological distress by eating this. So I'm going to choose the spiciest <laughs> character possible and oh just keep God. adding spice to it till my face explodes. <laughs> and then as I'm watching you sweat and suffer, having choked down <laughs> habanero and puri puri peppers, I'm like, yeah, he did this to himself and I'm fine with that. I am fine to watch him sweat and burn. My I God. might not be the good person in our dynamic. My God, there's a narrative arc, a narrative connection between flesh and blood and a red hot chili peppers. There's always a narrative connection when you know where to look. That's the thing is we play and sample a lot of games here at Ramen Packet Gaming because you never know what random inspiration you'll get from one thing to the next. Like when we were playing Ramen Fury, our first thought was, oh, if only we can redraw these with chibi faces because if the peppers smiled at you while killing you, that would be amazing. <laughs> Honestly, like, my entire aesthetic as a person is adorable animals be- Like, so there's a game I really enjoy called Unstable Unicorns. And one of the cards is Stabby the Unicorn, which is a happy unicorn who's duct taped a knife to his horn to stab you. That is my aesthetic. <laughs> oh, it's, it kind of sounds like Watership, Watership down. down. A little bit, but I like it more glib. Like, for me, it's less Watership Down and more- Red Wool, if someone just busted out an F-bomb out of nowhere. <laughs> like, I, I just enjoy the dissonance between happy, cute things and explosions. Like, weirdly, some episodes of Adventure Time fit that aesthetic really well. You're like, oh, wait, this is just post-apocalyptic. That The Great Mushroom War was literally a nuclear apocalypse in Adventure Time. Now you have my attention, show. This Isn't Adventure Time just like Mad Max, but with unicorns? A little bit. But to loop back to the ramen game, it's funny because, like, the actual cards, I'd say, like, 90% of the deck don't actually do anything special. There's no mechanical difference between an Uzumaki spiral look at it and get spiraled into death slash main character of Naruto snack and a beef cutlet. Mechanically, the only thing that matters is they were both meats. There's a few cards that are exceptions, like tofu, and then most of the mechanics came from the hot pepper garnish the other garnish, and which flavor packets you pick. But it gives you just enough power to mess with people. Like, I'd love to expand the scope of that game with more players to see what happens. Yes. Because I, I, it gave me just enough to mess with you. I think for, for our next session, we have to run a table of this. And that's the thing is, because it's a nice quick, we maybe spent, like, we played three games and it was about under an hour, including the time it took to learn it. Mm -hmm. So it's very good for an appetizer game. Like, much like ramen itself, it's delicious, but if you eat nothing but it, you will starve to death. No disrespect intended. Mm -hmm. Which is why sometimes you need barbecue, which is what flesh and blood is for. But we already talked about flesh and blood. I believe it was last week. So if you want to go in and investigate that, check our last episode. Wink, wink. Absolutely. And this might be a bit of a shorter episode this week. It's kind of hard to tell because... It wasn't a super dense game, so there isn't a ton of flavor, lore, and mechanics, and that's fine. So for a lighter game, a lighter episode, we tell some antidotes, I use the pepper voice, Will recovers the emotional <laughs> defeat from the time where I put, like, what? That one match was so ridiculous where I just was throwing peppers at you, you put back in your face. You put peppers in every soup I had. How and just the mental you? visual of me sneaking up and just dropping a single pepper one in your soup while making direct <laughs> eye contact. It's just so savage. Or I'm just like, throw, I like a full, I like the mental image of doing the Chef Ramsay sweeping all the plates on the ground and calling it garbage and demanding new ingredients. Oh as you can stand there horrified <laughs> trying to just eat your soup and be like, I made tasty soup, but I'm just throwing peppers at your head. Oh my god. I've never. This might be the start of my villain arc. Oh dear. I, I, I think the spicy peppers are getting to your head. Spicy peppers are delicious. Like, to just kind of sidebar and talk straight up soup. So, here's some fun facts about peppers. I've worked in kitchens a lot of my life. Jalapenos are the most mediocre of the pepper. Not because of their spice, but because of their flavor. They have mm. like a waxy flavor. So mediocre. But once smoked, you get chipotle. Chipotle paste is delicious. 
Habaneros are a spicier pepper, but they have a better, smokier flavor. And one thing that people don't get is the hotter the pepper, the less of it you want to use, the finer you want to dice it, the more you want to scatter it across the sauce. And there is an art to adding the correct amount of hot pepper to a dish. Unlike the handfuls I just tossed in you mid-game to make you suffer. Oh, <laughs> oh but I love like, these hot peppers. Oh yeah, like, and I think you mentioned that you're actually growing a ghost pepper, which will... I'm. I don't have a ghost pepper. Those are outside of my purview. I just don't think they would sell me one because it might kill me. So I'm growing a pepper sampler right now. So the first one in my little garden is the red hot chili pepper. Literally, mm -hmm. gotta love it. <laughs> Then there's the purple chili, which is a notch hotter than that. It is a beautiful color. And then there's the piri piri pepper. The piri piri pepper is mean. That is above a habanero. It's not a ghost pepper, but humans aren't supposed to eat ghost peppers. <laughs> the piri piri is still a pepper that wants to beat you up. That we, just, we specifically bred for suffering. Like this idea that we made a food that hurts us. That we made it stronger and stronger to hurt us more and more. It's just so fundamentally and beautifully human. It really is. Like, I don't know why, but like, it really does remind you that life is beautiful, even as like you're drenched in sweat and pain. Although I will say when you're overheating, one of the best things you can do is eat spicy food because then your body will sweat. But make sure you stay hydrated, folks. Everyone listening to this episode, stay hydrated. Yes, please stay hydrated. Not with soda, with water. Thank you. And with that, thank you everybody for tuning in. Please feel free to click the support our show link to directly support our podcast, which we will use almost exclusively to buy ramen themed games at the moment or ramen or water. One of our goals, one of our dreams is in our tentative ramen packet gaming office to set up a electric kettle and self-serve cupped ramen. That is legitimately what these donations could go towards. Indeed, and we will be sticking googly eyes on this uh, little machine, and we will be calling it Gary. I support Gary the Tea Kettle. You know it. But with that, thank you all for listening. Happy ramen, happy gaming, and a happy and life. And some hot peppers. Bye. Spicy peppers. Woo!